Hi, I'm Larry Menti. This week on Jersey Matters, a North Jersey congressional race turns ugly when swastikas show up on a campaign sign. The Democrats hold a rally in Atlantic City with a rallying cry to take back the Senate and the House. And the New Jersey Hall of Fame finally has a space it can call home. But we begin with an urgent warning from the New Jersey Poison Control Center about poisonous mushrooms. The headlines might have gotten your attention. A staggering increase in the number of people that see mushrooms in a field, eat them, and then find out they're poisonous mushrooms the hard way. To talk about that is Dr. Diane Colello, medical director at the New Jersey Poison Control Center. Thank you so much for being here. W staggering numbers, w what are the numbers? Yeah, we're seeing at the New Jersey Poison Control Center, we've had uh, tripling, even quadrupling, of the rate of calls to the Poison Control Center of people who eat mushrooms and then they don't feel well or become concerned that the mushroom they ate could be poisonous, or um, children who eat mushrooms, they find them in the lawn. So. Uh, what we have observed this year is many, many more people calling the Poison Control Center with these exposures. Is that because there's more mushrooms? Yep, I think that it is. The, you know, it's been a wet, rainy year, spring and summer, and whenever that happens, more mushrooms grow. Um, and if you probably look in your own yard, or oh, I have a lot them. Of yeah, no, I have. Yeah. Them. I've never yeah. thought to eat them. I don't want to shame anybody, but good. I, I you know, <laughs> thank you. But I would think that most people know about poisonous mushrooms, and that you can't trust the mushrooms in your yard. I think most do, but we do see these unfortunate events every year of people who think they're looking at an edible mushroom. You know, maybe they're. It looks the same. It it can look the same. You know, there's. Uh, there are mushrooms that grow in New Jersey that can make you sick to even very sick or even kill you that look like mushrooms that are edible. You know, they, they look like something that you might buy in a store or be served in a restaurant. You talked about one mushroom that we should really put up a picture of when yeah. we're talking about it as well so people know about it that looks a lot like the mushrooms you would buy in a store mm -hmm. that can cause your organs to fail. There is one mushroom that makes us the most worried and makes this message so important, which is the Amanita mushroom. It's white, it looks, you know, I could describe it to you, it's got a stalk and a, you know, a mushroom top, just like other white mushrooms, right? And that mushroom, when eaten, causes liver failure and organ failure. And when that happens, there's not a lot that we can do to treat it. How quickly does this happen, once you it eat the mushroom? Once you eat the mushroom, you usually start to feel sick within a few hours. Usually, with the most toxic species of mushroom, you actually have a little bit of a, of a break before you feel sick. It usually takes six to eight hours or so. And then you get vomiting, diarrhea, stomach upset. There's other mushrooms that grow in New Jersey and elsewhere that can make you sick. You know, you don't feel good. You really wish you didn't eat it. Um, and they may not cause organ failure, but, uh, but they're still not a good idea to eat. You can find those all over your yard, too. So a couple of things here. At least it's an easy problem to solve, an easy yeah. problem to cure. Right. And the message is, if you see mushrooms in, in a field or in your yard, even if you think they're safe, don't eat them. Don't pick and eat them. Right. That's absolutely right. And, and then secondly, if for some reason you end up with a mushroom that makes you feel sick, whether you picked it or somebody else picked it, they call, call Poison Control. Call the Poison Control Center. And what's the number for the Poison it's Control 1 Center? It's 1-800-222-1222. And we'll, we'll put that up on the screen and, and keep yeah. it up on the screen. Who, who's eating these mushrooms? You said you mentioned children. Is it only children? No, it's not. I mean, we definitely have children. Kids from about one to five years of age put a lot of things in their mouth, right? We, they put medicines in their mouth. They drink cleaners under the sink. And if they see a white fluffy mushroom growing in the yard, they're likely to pick it up and put it in their mouth. So we do definitely get calls about that. Um, and generally, we watch those closely, and generally they do okay. You is know, that most of them? Close eye on is them. That, is most it's, of them I'd, I'd say it's about probably about half. Um, but then what we have is people who see a mushroom in their yard, out in a field, on a golf course, out on a hike, um, and they pick it and eat it. And um, some 
of those cases, I think, are people who come from either another area of the world or another area of the country where an edible mushroom looks like a New Jersey mushroom that can kill you, right? You know, there's just confusion. Right. Um, these are lookalikes. So they're used to going out into a field and getting mushrooms right. because it's always been safe where they were before they moved to New Jersey. Yes. And now they're in New Jersey and it's not always safe. And it's not always safe. You told me a second ago that people are, are taking the mushrooms and, and making meals out of them. Yeah. Making soups and probably right. feeding them to their families. Right. And have you had cases like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Yeah, we hate to see that, but we have. And we every year we end up having one you know, group of three or four people who picked a mushroom, had it for dinner, everybody gets sick, and some cases, in some cases people die. So if you, you have mushrooms, let's say, growing wild in your yard, not mm -hmm. only should you not eat them, should you get rid of them? I mean, could you go over with a lawnmower? That would be an easy way. Yeah, I think that's sufficient. I, you know, we don't have to go crazy about make sure that you have no mushrooms in your yard because touching them won't hurt you. Breathing in the air around them won't hurt you. But if you have young children uh, who you think would be inclined to pick and eat them, I would get rid of them. And that's obviously why you're doing this interview and why, yeah. and why you're, you're just trying to get the word out because of so many, so many people. Anytime you get a rate from 15 to 50, which is, I think is what the rate has been for this summer compared to last summer, right. you're alarmed. Yeah, it's something that's very preventable. Right. Don't pick and eat a wild mushroom, and this won't happen. And that it's our responsibility to get the word out and just tell people, like, this is an easy way to prevent yourself from being injured. Yeah. Is, there, is, is there anything else? Is, is there something else we're missing? I mean, I know that uh, the mushrooms have gotten a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to, to poison, what, what, what do you get a lot of calls on other than mushrooms? Well, it depends a little on the time of year. We get a lot of calls about medication safety. Uh, we get a lot of calls about, again, children who put pills in their mouth or cleaners in their mouth um, that they find under the sink. Um, we do get a fair amount of calls for either prescription or illicit drug overdose. Um, and we talk to both the public as well as hospitals and healthcare professionals to guide their management of those cases. Um, one thing that we have just um, encountered in the last, in the last few weeks is, um, have you heard of this uh, dragon's breath, these liquid nitrogen infused no. foods? Yeah, this is kind of an I'm interesting thing. I'm the last thing. to find out about any yeah. of these things, so just assume <laughs> I don't know anything. Well, well, let me tell you. So, you know, people use liquid nitrogen to freeze food. It's like a culinary technique, right? You know, you right. could find it at a restaurant. You get like a very, a frozen treat that's, you know, served uh, for dessert that was frozen in some cases with liquid nitrogen. You've seen it, doctors use it to freeze warts. You know, it's, it's um, a substance that is a gas at room temperature, but if it is cooled to a very, very, very low temperature, like negative 300 degrees, it becomes liquid. That's liquid nitrogen. Okay. So um, there are these snacks that are served at like fairs and you know, street fairs and carnivals and that kind of thing, which are like cereal puffs or cheese puffs that are dipped in liquid nitrogen, super frozen, and then kids like to eat them, and grown-ups like to eat them, because when that deep, deep frozen snack hits your mouth, it forms this vapor. And when you breathe out, you look like you have dragon's breath. So that's where it gets the name. Is it poisonous? It can be. And what we're discovering, and the FDA just put something out right along with the New Jersey Poison Center, that when people eat these snacks that are frozen, like right in front of you, um, they get burns. They get like a frostbite burn in their mouth and their throat. Um, so why is it just made illegal? I mean, I, I yeah, don't get how, I why it's happening. I think we might happening. be getting there. Okay, good. Yeah. You, you come back yeah. and let's yeah. talk about it then. Yeah. Thank you for telling yeah, me about sure. that. Yeah, sure. So that's our, all that's of our kind of hot news for the week. Yeah. Dr. Diane Colello, okay. Medical Director at the New Jersey Poison Control Center. Thanks again for being here. Thanks. Jersey Matters continues right after this. Still to come on Jersey Matters, as the kids go back to school, we have a new movement to stop bullying. We'll explain next.